Hey guys, I hope you're hungry. Welcome back to War Stories here on the Florence channel. My name is Jericho. So for today's War Story, it is the legend of Bosk. We're going to talk about the character Bosk in the old expanded universe continuity before Disney saw fit to destroy it all with Force Awakens. So Bosk, right off the bat, Bosk is a Trandoshan, is his race. They're a lizard-like people who have an inbred hatred. Well, not inbred, bred in. I don't know. Uh, uh, they're born with it. Hatred of Wookiees. Much like um, Mon Geese and um, vipers, or whatever, the cobras in the real world. Bosk's name means devours his prey in the Trandoshan language. He's the son of Kradosk, who is the head of the Bounty Hunters Guild. So, Bounty Hunters Guild is a lot what you would think. It's just a group of bounty hunters who set up their rules for and to govern the bounty hunters so that everybody, like, it's like, don't kill another bounty hunter while you're going after the same bounty, like those sorts of things. And just sort of have the whole the whole system of being of bounty hunters being controlled. So, Bosk's father, Kradosk, was the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild, and when he sired Bosk, he was so happy when Bosk was born and immediately devoured all of his siblings, as is the Trandoshan way. So Bosk, right off the bat, was, was sort of a pampered son, an heir to the line of Bounty Hunters. So in his early bounty hunting career, Bosk first ran astray of Han, Solo, and Chewbacca. Um, so he started his career hunting Wookiee pelts. That was like, like all Transoceans, like I said, he, he is out to murder Wookiees. He hates them. He wants to kill them. Nothing he would rather do than destroy Wookiees. So he had an opportunity to kill a whole safe house. As we mentioned in the Chewbacca legends, Wookiees were regularly enslaved by the Empire for their great natural strength as they were um, used to build the Death Star. So Bosk had the opportunity to take out an entire colony of, um, of Wookiees. And Han and Chewie, of course, were able to stop him and thwart his efforts. And the way they did it was landing the Millennium Falcon right on top of, of Bosk's little ship, the first ship he had ever owned. So they earned a lifelong enmity of Bosk at the time. Bosk later acquired the ship that he would become famous for, the Hound's Tooth. It was well known for smelling absolutely awful, uh, mostly because of Bosk himself, but also because of all the, the half skin carcasses and pelts, the sort of disgusting things Bosk would regularly like to dine upon. Not the nicest guy. So the Hound's Tooth, not the nicest ship. So one of Bosk's other longtime enemies, much like uh, what, we, what we learned about Dengar, is Boba Fett. Um, Boba Fett never joined the Bounty Hunters Guild because Boba Fett is a solo operator. He doesn't want to play. He's not the type to go to guild meetings or pay guild dues. That's not the sort of character that Boba Fett is. So the, the guild and Boba Fett were often at odds. But uh, shortly before um, the Empire Strikes Back, if I'm recalling the chronology correctly, Boba Fett all of a sudden decided to join. Bosk was very hesitant. He knew how Boba Fett had always acted towards the guild before, but his father Kardosk was so happy to have such an able hunt hunter that everybody admired, everybody wanted on the on the team. So Bosk did indeed, or Boba Fett did indeed join the Bounty Hunters Guild. But Bosk ends up being correct. Boba Fett only joined to destroy the Bounty Hunters Guild. It was all a trick at the hands of Darth Vader and Prince Shizor, the leader of Black Sun, which is a a big criminal, uh, like the Mafia, essentially. Space Mafia is Black Sun, led by Prince Shizor. So Shizor and Vader wanted to destroy the Bounty Hunters Guild because they thought it was making the Bounty Hunters soft. If they were all protecting each other, looking out for each other, Bounty Hunters should not be the type to have a guild and laws and dues. They, saw, they thought that um, characters like Boba Fett were really what the Empire needed to have efficient Bounty Hunters because they served a very useful purpose um, to the Empire. So, Bosk was forced to team with Boba, Boba Fett to go after what are called the Shell Huts. Huts that just went around in little floating suits of armor. That's just what they did. It's weird. Um, didn't go well for Bosk at all as Boba Fett betrayed Bosk and the Bounty Hunters Guild. And the Bounty Hunters Guild was eventually completely divided in two. Bosk himself killed his father, Kradosk, to assume control. But then the guild was divided in half to the new guild under Bosk and the Loyalists who thought that the, that Boba Fett had ruined everything, Bosk was ruining everything, and they wanted the guild to go back to the way it was. Later in his career, um, around the time of Empire Strikes Back, the only time that Bosk is ever in the Star Wars movies is as one of the six Benny Hunters chosen to pursue Han Solo by Darth Vader. 
That's where he has his star-making scene when he goes, Make a good cha! Uh, when the Imperial officer asks, says that they don't need the scum that are bounty hunters, Bosk, of course, takes a big offense to that. So Bosk's plan is to use a network of Wookiee spies. He had a Wookiee that was willing to help him um, so that he could use them to get the inroad on where Han and Chewie might go, and that was his, his idea to getting to Han and Chewbacca first. Unfortunately for Bosk, they betrayed him, stole his ship for a time, and turned him over to the Empire, um, to an Imperial officer that did not agree with the use of the Bounty Hunters. I don't think the one that said they were scum, but that'd be kind of a cool little little callback. Um, that instead wanted to make Bosk into a dress for his wife, use that reptilian pelt to make a nice fancy dress. So pretty, pretty rough fate for even somebody as deplorable as Bosk, but Bosk did escape and continued on with his skull duggerous ways. Some of the famous successes that Bosk had in the old Legends continuity, um, chief among them was the murder of Hal Horn. Horn Horn is a really well-known character in the Star Wars Expanded Universe continuity. He was a smuggler. He's basically Han crossed with Luke because he was a smuggler, but he discovered that he had access to the Force and eventually trained under Luke and became a Jedi Knight. The first ever Star Wars book to be written in the first person is called I, Jedi, and it stars Corrin Horn. So that's kind of an interesting little interesting little story there. But Hal Horn's murder happens um, before before that book, as I recall. <clears throat> so Fett, Boba Fett twice tricks him off of his own ship. Once um, Bosk thinks that there's a bomb on board, he hears like the countdown or whatever. He hops into an escape pod when he realizes it's only a pre-recorded message. Boba Fett had tricked him once again. So Bosk grew to hate Boba Fett more than anything and after boss i mean boba fett's supposed death um in the sarlacc in return of the jedi boss gets proof and evidence that he is indeed alive so he and boba fett have one more confrontation in mos eisley and even at gunpoint boba fett i mean boss refuses to give up that evidence the evidence that boba fett is still alive that boba fett is desperate to not get out so that he can continue his operations and regroup his power and get back to the position he once enjoyed. So Boba Fett says to Bosk, you win, and gives him millions and millions of credits. So Bosk, once and for all, gets the one up on Boba Fett. And that's actually enough for him to more or less retire from the bounty hunting trade. It's enough money, he's defeated his longtime rival, finally. So Bosk does indeed uh, abandon the bounty hunting trade. And the last real consequence of his of his expanding universe career he does run into han solo one more time this is after if you watch the chewy's leg the chewy legend you know all about this after chewbacca's death at the hands of the yuzen vong uh boss can't help but to taunt his old rival han solo about it and he earns himself nothing more than a broken little snout so that's more or less the the legend of boss creepy little lizard man a horrifying monster hates wookies hates boba fett hates han solo ends up with a mouthful of broken teeth because of it so I hope you enjoyed this look into the character of Bosk in the Expanded Universe. Um, he does have adventures in the Clone Wars that I've not really gotten into, but this is all about you know, the legend. This is what, what could have been, the myth of Bosk, if you will. The legend of Bosk. So if you did enjoy, make sure you subscribe to my channel. We got War Stories every Tuesday and Thursday, where sometimes we talk about stuff like this. Sometimes we have other Star Wars discussions. We'll do movie reviews, wrestling stuff, all sorts of things here on the Fallen Sons channel. But I got something coming for you every single day. So please do subscribe and leave a like if you enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time. I don't know about you, but I'm full of gross Wookiee stuff, I guess. I guess. I don't know. That's that's horrible. Why would you eat a Wookiee? Even pelting them is pretty monstrous. I mean, they're already... Yak -yak. I mean, they're already... Like, it's already... I don't know. Boss is a bad dude. I mean, yeah. So I don't know why I'm rambling. I don't know why I decided I needed the video to be 30 seconds longer. I don't even know how long I've been going. But I'm full. I'm full nonetheless. See you guys next time.